What's going on people, it's your boy Poncho. back at you again with another video. Now, as you guys know, I've covered the SJ story over the past month or so, and we looked briefly into the case, and I gave you guys all the information that was currently out there at the time. Now, if some of you don't know, he was found guilty for his alleged part in the murder of Kamali Gabidian Link, but more information has been released regarding the case, so I thought I'd take you guys for a little in-depth look at what actually took place on the night of Kamali Gabidian Link's death. And before we take a look into the case, I just want to take this time out just to say, rest in peace to Kamali, I'd appreciate if you could leave your condolences down in the comment section below. Two men were found guilty on Friday 6th of December of the murder of 19 year old Kamali Gabidian Link and the attempted murder of a second man aged 20. Tyrell Graham, 18, born 18th of the 4th 2001 of St Helens Place Leighton, and Shireem Cookhorn, 21, born 27th of the 8th 1998 of Park Lane Tottenham. Cookcorn was also found guilty of possession of a firearm with intent. Three 17-year-old males, known as C, D and E, were also convicted of Kamali's murder and Section 18 grievous bodily harm with intent in relation to the second man. On the 17-year-old E was also found guilty of possession of a knife. The jury heard that the group had been calculated in their plan to cause serious injury on the night of 22nd of February 2019. The night before the attack on Kamali and the other victim, the group had parked a car, a silver Peugeot 307, on the Broadwater Farm Estate, which would become their meeting point before and after the attack. On the night of the murder, the group of seven males, including the five defendants and two unknown individuals, set off on bicycles towards Woodgreen at around 7pm to search for suspected rival gang members who may also have been out on that evening. Such was their violent intent that between the five defendants, they carried at least five knives, including a machete and a small sword, a handgun and a shotgun. On approaching Lordship Lane near the View Cinema Complex, the group first sighted the victims, who themselves were with two others. On seeing the victims, the defendants immediately dropped their bicycles and produced knives and the firearm. Cork Corn fired shots at the victims. These missed the target and one bullet was later recovered in a nearby shop. The bullet travelled through an open door of the store, narrowly missing customers and staff. The victim's group prepared for a fight and decided to flee when Cookcorn fired his handgun. The defendants began to chase after their victims, brandishing their weapons in plain sight and with very little consideration for the members of public who were out socially. A short chase followed which saw the victim's group divide into two pairs. Kamali and the other victim ran back towards their parked car while the other two escaped unharmed. After losing two of the victims, the defendants returned to their bicycles and went back after Kamali and the other victim who had now run off in different directions. The defendant's group soon caught up with the 20-year-old victim and surrounded him. With the victim now encircled, the defendants viciously attacked him, stabbing him eight times and shooting him once in the bum. However, their attack was interrupted when Kamali, who had managed to return to his parked car, drove towards the defendant in a failed attempt to frighten them off. The defendants turned their attention to Kamali and his car and began to strike the vehicle's window and windscreen with their weapons. Kamali tried to escape by reversing his car away but unfortunately got himself stuck when he reversed into several parked cars on Vincent Road. He decided to leave his car and ran into a hairdresser's shop that was just across the road, hoping to barricade himself inside. However, the defendants followed him inside and Kamali suffered fatal stab injuries. The defendants then fled on their bikes back to their parked car at the Broadwater Farm Estate, where they changed their clothes and left the area. Police were called to the scene about 8.09pm. The London Ambulance Service's paramedics immediately began to attend to both victims and transported them to hospital. Despite the efforts of doctors, Kamali was pronounced dead shortly after 3am on Saturday the 23rd of February. Homicide detectives from the Met Specialist Crime North began their investigation which involved hundreds of hours of CCTV pieced together to understand the route taken by the defendants and forensic analysis of multiple crime scenes across Woodgreen. The families were contacted and supported by specialist liaison officers who regularly updated them throughout the investigation. Graham was the first to be arrested by detectives on Sunday 21st of April and charged the next day with murder and attempted murder. The second arrest came from the following month. Corkhorn was arrested on Thursday the 2nd of May and charged the next day, followed by a 17-year-old male who was arrested on Thursday 16th of May and charged the next day. Homicide detectives then arrested two boys who were aged 16 at the time but are now 17 on Wednesday 10th of July before subsequently charging them the following day with murder and attempted murder. Detective Chief Inspector Simon Stancombe of Specialist Crime North said, So desperate were the defendants to continue their petty postcode rivalry, the gang launched their gun and knife attack outside a busy cinema and several restaurants packed with people and children enjoying their Friday night. 
Having chased down Kamali and his friend like a pack of animals, they set about them with the ferocity I've rarely seen. Not content with the damage they had caused that night, they then boasted about their murderous exploits in amateurish drill videos. In truth, there are no winners, no bragging rights or anything to be proud of. One man is dead, another has life-changing injuries, a family is utterly bereaved, and five young men will spend the best days of their lives behind bars. And that's a more in-depth look surrounding the whole SJ trial and the Kamali Gabidian Link death. Once again, I just want to take this time out just to say rest in peace to Kamali Gabidian Link. My condolences go out to his family and his friends. And the whole situation is just sad really. We've lost really good musical talent. A man has lost his life. Another man nearly lost his life. He's got life changing injuries now. And it just goes to show you that no matter how successful people can actually be, they can still get caught up in some street shit. And like the old saying goes, you can take the person out the hood, but you can never take the hood out of the person. And even if they're on a good path in life, unfortunately, it still creeps back up and can get caught up in something and destroy your whole life pretty much. But yeah, when I find out more in-depth details about the trial, as always, I'll keep you guys updated. But let me know what you guys think of this in the comment section below. Give the video a little like. I'm trying to hit 1k subscribers by the end of the year, so I'd appreciate it if you're new around here, if you could hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. It's been your boy, Poncho, and I'm out.